Okay, so on the Mondial, we'll look at all the features of a Mondial from the head end all the way down to the foot end. Coming to the head end, we know about these wheels, we've previously discussed them. Over here we have a safety catch. The safety, the safety catch is when you unload it out of an ambulance, it'll catch onto the safety bar in the event of it not correctly unloading out of an ambulance. Moving up here, we have um, head end handles. The head end handles are deployed by pushing the red button in, releasing it, it locks into two different positions. But every time you want it to go to position, you have to push the button in and it'll lock. If you want to go all the way out, keep it depressed, all the way out locks into position. And that is with both of them, both sides. And we use this when we want to lift the stretcher or we need to do um, load onto different platforms. So just to press it back in. Moving up over here, just underneath the head, the, the head panel, um, or our backrest, as we might call it, there are release levers here that you have to push down. And they, both on both sides, you can press either or. If you push down on it, it activates or deactivates the gas strut. The gas strut is what makes it move, makes the backrest move backwards and forwards. So you push it down, it goes into position. It's multiple levels, so there's no specific, you can have it exactly where you want. If you have a, better, a heavy patient that's got a heavy chest area, and we want to control it, it's probably a good idea to use both at the same time so you can control the weight of that patient. What we also have on the backrest, not only have we have a gas strut, um, as, we, as you see over here, we can actually deploy a backrest extension. So a backrest extension comes in really handy with taller patients. On the mattress itself, we have a spare pillow, and that is in case you deploy that. If you don't want to have the, the extra pillow on your mattress, you can actually take it off. In the event of you not having that head extension, you can take that off the mattress. Deploy, it's a simple process of pushing in or pulling out. And moving back down, now that we've got a clear area over here, we can use this area over here for storage of equipment. Whilst you're transporting the patient, um, from the, the, the incident to the ambulance, we could put equipment here, equipment storage. Naturally, that equipment storage won't work if the backrest is down. Looking over down on the bottom here, we have a couple of indicators. The first one on the right-hand side is a red handle that we have. When we depress that red handle and we want to go down to ground level or different level or bed height level, we have to depress that lever and move it down to the particular height we want. The safest way of doing that is if we depress the lever under load, it will not release. What we need to do is lift the, 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 the Mondial slightly up, release the lever, the indicator will go red, we release the lever. If we lift it up slightly, we release the lever, we indicate red. So the moment it shows indicate red, it means it's not safe. And so we can move it down to different levels that we require. This lever is on both the head and foot end end. We will show you the foot end handle as well. Once you've got to the desired height and you want to go back up, all it is is a case of deploying your handles out and lifting it up and you'll hear it click. Click, click, click. And it'll lock into position. Looking further down, um, over here we have a blue handle. The blue handle itself is actually to release the front wheels to have a 360 degree swivel. So what we do to, do, to, to get that to be activated, we pull it towards the front of the stretcher and we have to keep it activated or depressed at all times. What that'll do is that'll get, let our wheels at the head end swivel. The moment we release that lever and we push the Mondial into a straight position, the wheels lock back into position. So if it's a case of when using this, it has to be depressed to use that swivel wheel function. That is what we have at the moment, what we've covered on the head end section of the Mondial.
Now, what I'm going to be showing you is the Mondial patient restraint system. We have a couple of straps. We have an over the shoulder strap, it's an over the shoulder strap there. We have an over the chest strap, we have a waist strap, and we have a leg strap. To release the strap, pretty much the same as a seatbelt, push on the button, open them up. So to open them all up, open them up. We then put our patient on the actual uh, stretcher itself. We would then judge the size of the patient. If we need to make them longer, we take the tab, we pull down on the tab to make them longer, to make them shorter, just pull up on the tail end. You then adjust it to what you thought the patient's size was. I'm going to be putting the tangs here, so it's just a bit easier for you to see, but the two tangs lie next to each other. We take the waist strap, we feed the seatbelt male buckle through and clip it into the female buckle. Then we would take the chest strap, put the chest strap over the chest area, and then we have the foot strap. In the event of you wanting to remove your patient restraint system from the Mondial, what we do is we loosen all of the straps, move them to the side, And on the over-the-shoulder strap and on the waist strap, the method, the mechanism that is used is this metal tab uh, mechanism with a plastic tab keeper that holds it in with a uh, groove tang. What you do there is you push that down, the little plastic one, you push it down and forward. Then the ta ta tag itself, push down, take it off. When we replace it, you make sure that that groove lines up with the actual cutout, feed it in, and you'll hear a slight click, and it's in position. And to lock it up, push the tag in, push it in. And the reverse to take it out. Push it down, and out. Okay, now that we've covered the patient restraints, what we're now going to show you is a bit further down are the side arms. The side arms are mainly to keep the patient secure, make them feel secure. To deploy it and drop them down, you push down on the red button and they go all the way down. You can lift them up slightly, that they move to the half position and then they just lock back up into the side arm position of the car. Just make sure that they are in this position when you load it in the back of the ambulance. Also on the side over here, we have side handles. The side handles assist you in maneuvering the, the Mondial um, and also assist you that if you have a really pa big patient, heavy patient that you're lifting from the ground into loading position, that there could be six operators around the Mondial and a nice side handle to assist with the lift. If you wanted to do, you can also hang Nana's handbag on there if you like. But moving a bit further down, we have wheel, wheel locks, and that's on both sides. Wheel lock, to, to, to activate them, push down. To deactivate, you put your, your shoe on there, and you just roll it forward. To activate, put your foot on there, roll it backwards. Put your foot on there, roll it forwards. That's how we use the brake. Brakes locked. Right, Moving down from the side arms, we'll move down to the bottom of the Mondial. At the bottom of the Mondial, we have a shock position. Some people, Trendelenburg position, shock frame, 
um, leg elevation positions, one of the new names that have come out. And to deploy that, it's simply a case of lifting up the frame. So it's lifting up the frame. To get the frame back down to the down, there's tabs on either side of the frame. What you have to do is lift the frame slightly, push down on both tabs, and release it back down. It also has knee gatch position, or in a knee gatch position, you push on, pull on both red tabs on the side, and it goes into the knee gatch position. Once the knee gauge position is deployed to get back onto a flat position, you lift the frame up slightly and let it down. So you lift it up and let it down. For us to show you some of the other um, features of the Mondial, I'm actually going to lift it to the shock frame so we can look underneath the rest of the Mondial. Okay, so when we lift the shock position up, what we need to be aware of is we do need to be aware of that there's a possible pitch point over here this area when you actually put it back down flat. Also just underneath there what we will see is a tracker over there. So that tracker over there will tell you how many cycles the Mondial has done. That comes in really handy for your service department if you want to change the Mondials to different vehicles. Um, it gives you an idea of the life cycle of that. So to release the shock frame as we said we will lift it up again. Watch out for the finger pinch point when you do that. Okay, underneath the shock frame of the Mondial, we have a couple of levers. The first one is to the left-hand side. It's a blue lever. The blue lever's function is that when the Mondial is at ground level and it is deployed or activated, the lever locks the legs together and we can lift the Mondial up and move it around the terrain that we want to walk around without the legs dropping to the ground. However, when we get to the position that we want the legs to come up again, we would then push the lever and depress it back in the current position it's in. What we've done is we've added a zip tie or a cable tie to the lever. And the reason for that is that we make sure that it is not um, activated at all times. And if you do need it to be activated, you can merely take a pair of scissors or whatever and cut it off and then activate it. The next lever that we have is the exact same as the head end lever, which is the lever that releases the legs to go to various positions down. Works on exactly the same principle. When I depress the lever, nothing happens. When I depress the lever and I lift it up, the, the, up slightly, it'll be deactivated and drop to the next level. What you will see is when I move between the levels as I, act, I lift it up slightly, I go to red and then I release it immediately so it goes to the next level. If I keep it depressed, it will go all the way down to the ground. So it's a safety proportion for yourself that you're doing it in stages to go to the ground. Once you want it to come back up, you would then merely deploy the handles and go back up. Further down, what you could have a look at over here as well, is you will see that there is a QR code. That QR code is so you can download the operator's instruction. It does advise two-person operator and a load capacity of 280 kilograms, which is a fairly good load.
Let's cover the Mondial and what the Mondial can do for us and all the applications of the Mondial. What we're going to do is look at how the floor lock works and how the Mondial fits into the floor lock. At the front of the ambulance or towards the front of your ambulance, you will have a front floor catch. Those catches will actually catch the front of the and, and, and secure the front of the Mondial. And towards the back of the, the back of your ambulance, obviously this isn't an ambulance, we, we're showing you what it does inside an ambulance, but we have a rear floor catch. When we do, uh, load the Mondial into the ambulance, what we will then do is we will make sure that the Mondial is secured. By doing that, we have to deploy the floor lock to make sure it locks up. What we do is we pull back this bar back towards the ambulance, put it down to the ground, and it locks in position. Once that's occurred, we would now have the Mondial secured with a patient in the back of the ambulance or without a patient, and we'll get to our destination. In the case of us now having to um, take the Mondial out, we have to release the floor lock. How we release the floor lock is we pull it towards the back of the ambulance, lift it up, and push the cap forward, and it will actually release the mechanism. In the event of us unloading the Mondial out of the back of the ambulance and the front legs don't lock properly, we have a safety bar and a safety catch. The safety bars on the floor of the ambulance mount there permanently, the safety catch is actually on the Mondial itself. So if the floor lock, uh, the, the legs don't deploy properly, this actual safety catch will catch onto the floor bar and you won't carry, be able to take the Mondial out of the back of the ambulance. Now that we've covered the floor lock, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be showing you how to load it and unload it into the back of an ambulance. As a self-loading stretcher, it's one of the very few in the market that actually don't need you to depress any lever of any sort or push any button of any sort. It's a self-loading, easy load system. How we achieve that self-load, easy loading system when we go in is we will deploy the rear handles. The rear handles are so we can just guide it into the back of the ambulance. Once we start the loading process, it's a continuous motion. You commit to load, and once you load, you carry on loading. Unlike any other stretcher, other stretchers you commit to load, halfway through you carry on. We commit to load, we load. And this is how we do it. You line it up with the back of your ambulance or your load platform, you line it up, thereafter you just carry on pushing it and let the easy load system do the work for you. So you push it, commit to load, load. Once it's loaded in the back of the ambulance, you then lock it on the floor. Put our handles back, and it is now secure in the back of the ambulance. That is how we load into ambulance. To unload in the ambulance is the reverse of just what we've done. What we do is we deploy the handle, we release the floor lock. Remember, put it back towards you, lift it up, and push it forward. We then take it, and what we're listening for as we're unloading, we commit to unload, we listen, that the rear legs click into position and lock into position as we get out. So if we listen to that carefully, click, and it unloads. So as they click into position, it unloads out of the back of the ambulance. What we're going to be showing you now is how the safety lock works um, when you unload the when you unload the Mondial out of the ambulance and you're on uneven surfaces and we're emulating that over here with a wooden block. If we're on an uneven surface 
and the front wheels don't lock, the safety catch then comes into action and catches it so that the rest of the stretcher doesn't come out of the ambulance. Naturally, it's a safety mechanism. At your, as you unload, you have your two handles here, you hear the click of your two um, rear legs. But what you will notice here is the front leg hasn't deployed. So the front leg itself hasn't actually deployed fully. In that case, you'll see that the safety bail and the safety bar on the actual front of the unit catches onto the bar and we cannot unload it any further out of the back of the, of the vehicle. How we get around that, there's a couple of ways of doing it, but the best way to do it is to lift the back of the Mondial. In this particular case, we'll remove the obstacle, you will still see that it's still caught. So we still cannot get out of, out of the vehicle. Now, if you keep looking at the safety bar, as I lift the Mondial to the correct part, and that wheel goes and locks up, the safety bar jumps up, you move it a bit forward to the back of the ambulance, it releases and you can pull it out the back of your ambulance. So that's how the safety bail prevents you actually dropping the stretcher when unloading out of the back of your ambulance. is a common operated error. As you know, when we load the Mondial, what I said is we commit to load and load. And that means one load continuously. If we don't do it continuously and we stop halfway, like we traditionally are used to, you're gonna take a lot of weight at the NXO. It's a common problem that is an operated error because you're not using it in one constant motion. So when you go in, you go in slowly and you stop halfway, Bottom's gonna drop down on you. You don't want that to happen. What you want to happen is when I go in, I put it in, constant pressure. So there's that critical small time period that you could possibly take a load. If you constantly load it and you commit to load and you load, you won't have that problem. And what I'm gonna show you is what could possibly happen. So we're going to start unloading it, but it's a staggered motion. It's nice and slow. The back legs are locked in position, but haven't extended all the way out. What will then happen is we'll bring it out to the rest of the ambulance, and the front legs are then not deployed. Earlier on, we said if we're on an uneven surface, the safety catch will catch it. At the moment, we are on an even surface. Therefore, what we need to do is lift the stretcher up, these rear, the rear legs up, so the front legs can lock, and then we can take it out of the back of the ambulance. What I'm going to be demonstrating to you is how to get the Mondial down to a bed level. Now let's take, when you are out on the crew and you are on the road, the crew members, there's always two of you. I'm going to demonstrate it with one person because I'm only one person. We always advise two-person operation. So as we know, at the foot end over here, there's a red handle, I have to depress it slightly, I have to depress it, lift it up slightly, depress it, lift it up slightly, depress it, lift it up. Then I would go to the head end. So now the Mondial is at ground level. If we want to now walk over a different terrain, and we want to walk over a rough terrain, and we don't want the legs to, to actually come up when I lift it up, we deploy the blue lever that we spoke about a little bit earlier on. However, in this case, we want it now to go back up. So after you've deployed it over that ter terrain, and you've moved over that terrain, and you come back, you put the Mondial back on the ground, you put the lever, you activate the lever again, so you push it in towards the front. And then what we do, is there will be two operators. Simultaneously, there's only one of me. So if there is only one of you, it's a couple of them with one, two kicks. Yes, the patient might be heading down. And here, we're not gonna go all the way up. One, two, maybe three. It's a seesaw effect. 
If there were two operators, it would be straight up, each leg will click. As it goes up, it clicks in position. So that's just how you move up and down.